it's just upsetting. Every week, imitating Stormzy. Stop being a nice guy, bro. You can't stand up in games. He reminds me of McDonald's. It upset people, cuz. I'll upset everyone. This is a L. Have a nice. Everyone, I'm Poet, and these are the things I dislike about life, because my life is football. The player that winds me up the most is a player who I feel, he reminds me of McDonald's. So when I first went to McDonald's, I take a look at McDonald's, the burger looks incredible. You're looking at the cheese and so on and so forth, and then you get the burger, and you're like, it doesn't look like that. And then you still go back to McDonald's expecting the same thing. Now, my problem is the fact that that reminds me of Theo Walcott. He comes on the scene at 16 years old and you think to yourself, oh, he's going to the World Cup, he's scoring incredible goals in the championship, he must become a great player. Then he's the heir to the throne to Thierry Henry and you're like, oh my Lord, Thierry's going to teach him. And Bro, like every year I was just disappointed. It's just upsetting. Do I have love for Theo Walcott? It's like asking me about my ex-girlfriend. Um, there was great moments in my relationship with my ex-girlfriend, but on a whole, was it toxic? Hell yeah. If he was honest with himself and what he could achieve, you know, I wouldn't be so upset. And there's great moments when he's on the bench. I think about when he was, you know, getting stretched off the field saying 2-0. Like, if that's your best moment as an Arsenal player, it's pretty embarrassing. Because uh, some of the greatest moments for, like, Patrick Vieira is lifting the FA Cup and lifting the Premier League. And, your, you know, your, your most memorable moment is saying 2-0 when you're getting stretched off and people are throwing stuff at you. But you was great on FIFA and chill. Let me throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> you were sensational. This is no reflection on your character. You're a wonderful man. It's just disappointing, Theo. I don't hate you. I find you very annoying. That you never filled your potential and you wasn't honest enough to admit it. I think it's for us time for us to accept that it's just a bit of a flop. I'm an Arsenal fan, so we can always go for the token Man United because of the, you know, but Fabregas threw pizza and Alex Ferguson, so we won that. And then you could say Spurs, but they've never won the Premier League. So you've got to have a niche side that makes you go, oh, I don't even want to go down there. I've been there. I've been there. The only place in the whole world in the month of July where it's meant to be pretty warm in London, it's meant to be warm in England, it's the only place at 3 p.m. that is freezing cold. I'm talking about Stoke. And then we take a look at the team. Bruv, why do Arsenal fans hate Stoke? Let's be honest. Ryan Shawcross, mate. That's the reason why we hate Stoke. Because you can make a mistake and carry on with life and we'll be like, oh, that's all right. Forget it. My bro, your slid tackled man like from um, Ramsey, had man out for how long? And then when Ramsey comes and plays, you boo him. Do you know I love Aaron Ramsey? I remember him scoring against them 2013, probably his best season when we won the FA Cup and he scored the winning goal against Hull. He scores the opening goal in a 3-1 win against Stoke and they boo him for scoring. So he has to, they were booing him every time he touched the ball. So he scores, does that in front of the fans. What are you not upset about? Man broke his leg, he couldn't walk. He couldn't do his job. Terminator does his job. Ask me and Vuj, we do our job at Copper 90. Aaron Ramsey couldn't do his job because of this Stoke captain. And you lot are upset about him not being able to do his job. Then on top of that, you had throw-ins for corners. That's cheating. How is Rory Delap throwing it from the halfway line in the box, in the six-yard box? There's, there's rules, you can't do that. And then you had Ryan shotting after that. It's like, it was jarring playing you lot. Even your midgets were tall. How can your midget be six foot one? This is not fair. And Tony Pulis, every week, Every week, imitating Stormzy. There comes a point where you've got to put the tracksuit down. Put a suit on, mate. Look the part, at least. You're coming here like you're going jogging. And you're wearing the same hats as like 15-year-olds in grand videos. You've got to set an example, Tony. And you did, you left. And that's a good example to set. If Stoke was the last place for me to live, I'd rather die. Oh my God, this is... You see gaffers, yeah? As a gaffer, as a manager, you've got to be strong. You've got to be prepared to make some horrible decisions. That's why I love Jose Mourinho. Call him what you want, but he says what he says with his chest, even if it's bollocks. And you know what? He's got Champions League medals. He's got Premier League. Say what you want about him. To me, he's a success as a manager. Maybe his attitude's a bit questionable now and then, but I feel like if you take that out of Mourinho, then you haven't got the Mourinho you've got today. So I'm just going to take a look at his good qualities and say, I have a nice Mourinho. I like you. There's so many gaffers that people could point at and be like, oh, they're annoying. You know, Louis van Gaal's face is still melting. I'm going to the nice guy. Now there's a saying, nice guys finish off last. Zola, that's why you are now an assistant manager. You was a gaffer at Watford. Was you never gaffer at West Ham? And now you're an assistant at a failing Chelsea side. Zola, stop being a nice guy, bro. Stop being a nice, oh yeah, I don't want to upset. I upset people, cuz. I'll upset everyone, for the truth. Zola, this nice guy in football, I'm sorry. There's only one nice guy in football that I will accept, and that is Kante, the nicest man in football. If you want to be a nice guy, be a physio. I'll have no problem with you. Be a pundit. Be a bull boy.
You're the same size as them anyway, but you can't be a gaffer and be this nice. It makes me sound like an absolute prick for disliking you, but that's not the qualities I want to see in a manager. I say bring back Paolo De Canio. That's who I want to see. But in life, I like to chill with Zola. Nice person. Oh, there's a lot of stadiums I don't like. They're all joint. I'm not going to choose one. I'm just going to tell you some stadiums that need to have a closing time. I feel like Fulham, Craven Cottage should close at 12 p.m. That means you can have no Premier League games at Fulham after 12 p.m. I think all games at Premier League should be at 10 a.m. there. It's a cottage. I associate cottage with the morning. So if I'm not going there in the morning, there's no need for me to go to the cottage. Close it down. It has no business in the Premier League. Instead of coming out through the middle on the halfway line, you come out in the corner into a cottage. It's not like Old Trafford when you walk out from the corner, you look at it and you say, Jesus Christ, it's pretty nice this. Look at that view. Have you seen the view at the cottage? And then, then you've got Turf Moor. How can your stadium be called Turf Moor? You need to turf less. You need to move away from there and build a whole new stadium. Why can I see houses in the background? It reminds me of Highbury. When I used to play FIFA 98, and they used to have the screen, and you could see the, the, the council houses in the background. I don't want to see what men are doing in their kitchen. I don't deserve that. I'm watching match of the day, and I can see men in their kitchen. Watching match of the day. Why are you, why are you all looking at the same thing? Close down turf more, and then who knows? I might be all right, but I'm not, I'm not happy going to them grounds. Biggest thing in football now that needs to be abolished is trying to treat these footballers and these fans like they're not humans. You go to the Emirates, you can't stand up. Big man, we're not at the cinema. I'm standing up. We're not watching a film. I'm not being quiet. We're not at the museum. We're not at Craven Cottage. We are at a football ground where we expect to see success and we expect kind of to see some good football. So when we do see it, we're gonna stand up and admire it. Why is that a problem for people? I remember this very vividly. 1-1, Man City versus Aston Villa, last minute. Mika Richards scores an equaliser as an 18 year old boy for the club he probably watched growing up thinking, I wish I could have an opportunity. Stuart Pearce was his manager. He runs into the crowd to celebrate, scoring a goal in the FA Cup, the oldest running cup competition. And his gaffer says that, doesn't understand why he's doing that. An 18 year old boy scoring a goal as a def defender's not even scored that frequent anyway. But then you get the equaliser in an FA Cup game and this is the response. I'm from the era of Ravanelli. I couldn't wait for Ravanelli. I would even celebrate Ravanelli scoring against Arsenal because he was backing off the top. Balotelli, look at these moments you've had man backing off the top, showing you that they go gym. What's wrong with that? That is your bait, that's your human emotion at that moment. Now you can't take your top off, you can't stand up in games. The FA need to change this rule. Let's make football about the fans. Let's make it about emotion and love and having a good laugh. There's too many rules, but there's no rules. That's the mad thing, there's actually no rules. But there's too many rules. Now in football, I'm not old enough to remember one referee, but I imagine there was one official back in the day and two linesmen. In the Champions League, the major comp competitions you have now, just, just to put, let me just show you where our money's going. Or maybe it's not our money, I don't know where this money's coming from. But they've got enough money now to pay a referee, two linesmen, a fourth official, a man behind the line on opposite goals. Four people on laptops watching porn claiming they're watching the game for VAR. So now we're paying nine people to referee one game. This is a L. Take that money out of there, put it into some bloody, I don't know, some youth schools or something where you can develop grassroots football. You're just wasting money. You're asking these officials to be perfect. Bad decisions are gonna happen. I don't like the fact that there's too many, there's too many officials in football. There's too many restrictions with celebrating and all this other stuff. Just bring it back to 1996, when Frank Sinclair pulled down his pants after scoring a goal. Bring me back to real football. Middlesbrough, Emerson, Janino, Ravanelli. Take me back, Craig Higgins. Craig Higgs, take me back. Because football today for me, the younger generation, they're not really seeing where it is. It's meant to be fun.